Hi, this is Glenn Livingston, and I want to tell you how you can improve your click sales and profits faster by testing more than one thing at a time. We're going to talk about advanced testing with AdWords, and you might have heard that you're not supposed to test more than one thing at a time, and that's a good rule of thumb for people as they're just starting out. But if you want to get the edge on your competition, there's a few things you have to know, just a few things, which will empower you to test uh, more than one thing at a time, get the exact right combinations, and when you get through these two videos, you'll know how to test hundreds of things at once, gaining incredible momentum in terms of testing speed over your competition. So let's go through this. Let's start by looking at a simple A-B test. In a simple A-B test, we're choosing only one thing at a time, one element to test like the headline. And in this example, I, I'm a dog lover, so I wanted to test two different headlines for this Google ad. One is, do you, do, do you love dogs? And the other is, really love dogs? And everything else in the ad is exactly the same. Help abandon dogs, find a loving home today. www.homesfordogs. I don't even know if that's a real URL. I just made that up. So we're testing one element and two actual ads. I think that's pretty straightforward. That's what most people are doing. And that's the standard advice that people get. Um, now, of course, you could extend that and Google will rotate as many ads as, you, as you'd like them to rotate for you. And you could choose one element. So the element is the headline. And you could choose three or more options. You could say, do you love dogs? Really love dogs? Or are you a dog lover? And the advantage of that is you get to see how they perform against each other on the same traffic. Um, it takes a little more time because you need to wait until each one of these, as a rule of thumb, has 30 actions. If you watch the split testing video, you'll find out about a website called splittester.com where you can um, sometimes reduce that. But but basically, if you add an extra, if, if you add an extra uh, option to the headline, you're going to have to test you know 50% longer. With 50% more traffic, it's going to take you 50% more time and cost you 50% more money. Um, and maybe you're willing to make that trade-off in order to really see how these three headlines perform against each other. So let's go forward. Now, here's where it starts to get interesting. What if, what if instead of just testing the headline, we also wanted to test changing one of the words in the text? So in this case, I'm testing, do you, do you love dogs against really love dogs in the headline? But I also want to know what happens if I change out the word abandoned and I swap it in, in lonely instead. And because I've got two different options for the headline and two different options for the body copy, the first line of body copy, well, that gives me four possible ads to test. So now I'm testing, you know, I've got to get four times at least 30 actions or 120 actions for my test to complete. It's going to take me a little longer. And there are strong benefits and strong drawbacks to, to doing this. And let's take a look at that. So you, you understand we're testing two, two headlines and two pieces of body copy in the text. And we want to know not only which headline works best or which word in the body copy works best, but we want to know what the best combination of headline and body copy is. Okay, now this is where it starts to get interesting. Because when you run this type of a model, and this is, for lack of a better term, um, we could use a lay term and call this an all combinations model. Um, technically, it's called a full factorial model because you're using all combinations of all the factors, which is a fancy way of saying you're going to test do you love dogs and really love dogs with ads that say abandoned and lonely. So you wind up with four ads. Two times two is four. And when we do this, there's something kind of interesting that happens. Um, first of all, the numbers in big, bold, black are the actual ad results. You plug those in, you get the actual ad results. But then you can also take the averages across the rows and across the columns. So let's look at the averages first, because those are a little bit easier to explain. Let's look at the column averages um, at the very bottom. And the column av averages for Do You Love Dogs is 2.2%. Whereas the column average for really love dogs is 3%. Now, what does that mean? That means that no matter what the, if we don't, if we don't consider anything to do with the word abandoned or lonely, if we don't consider what's actually in the body copy, it looks like the really love dogs, um, 
the Really Love Dogs headline is out pulling the Do You Love Dogs headline. So we're actually kind of able to look across all these four tests and figure out how well Really Love Dogs is doing as opposed to, to Do You Love Dogs, um, even though it wasn't on one ad and it, it's a little harder to see. Um, and if you look at the Abandoned and Lonely uh, rows, and you look at the raw averages, those are pretty close. It, it almost looks like Abandoned and Lonely don't make any difference at all. But here's the advantage of testing things together. Because if you look at, you see that big number in yellow that says, it's highlighted in yellow, it says 3.7%. What that tells you is that the headline really love dogs works especially well with the word abandoned in the body copy. And you wouldn't have known that if you tested the headlines alone or the body copy alone. You had to test them together to find that out because otherwise all, we, all you would have seen would have been the averages. And, and by testing them together, you can tell how they work together. So a very strong benefit of doing an all combinations or full factorial model where you test every option of every element together with every other option, where you, you test every combination possible, a very strong benefit of that is you get to see what's the exact right combination that's going to produce the absolute best response. You following me? So there's some very strong benefits to, to testing more th than one thing at a time, way over and above testing one thing at a time, because there are things you can see that you just wouldn't see otherwise, and you'll wind up picking combinations that'll, that can seriously outperform the competitors who are just testing one thing at a time. So that's, that's one very serious advantage. And of course, this is not just limited to two by two. You could have had three headlines and two body copy words, or... You could have had three headlines and five body copy changes, and you could actually have um, another element. Maybe you were testing different display URLs, so you could have had a, you know, three by three, and then two different display URLs. And you can, you could extend this out so that you have dozens of combinations, sometimes even hundreds of combinations. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is you've got to have a lot of traffic to test a lot of combinations. And because you've got to have a lot of traffic, it also takes a lot of time and a lot of money. So you're spending resources that maybe you don't have, or maybe you're not necessary to spend to get almost the same exact information. So as the number of options and elements grows, the amount of time, money, and energy it takes to complete the test quickly gets out of hand. And the solution, which I'm gonna share in the next video, is so super cool. It's something my friend David Bullock introduced to the market a couple of years ago. It's called Taguchi testing. So I really encourage you to watch the next video. Um, and there are some free tools you can use to do it. And of course, all of this testing in AdWords is, is free for you. Anyway, thanks.